I'm so Did I Now will I remember All the joy that Your love can bring So we're up to a point where we're ready to start doing some of the final filling and finishing on the Miss Ashley ring we started to repair on the last video. One of the projects we hope to do in the next week or two is to retrofit the Typhoon with a 56 and test, test fly it, a Sato 56. All the tooling for the carbon fiber tanks is making us parts now. We've got to be ready to go into really into final production on these very shortly. Johnny Duncan is cutting us as we speak. In fact, I think he said he's going to cut it today. The core for our new number two carbon fiber ring mold, which will be a Miss Ashley Typhoon mold. We'll be able to make a molded carbon ring for both of those over the winter. We're going to build on the success of the Typhoon program with the Z-Tron and incorporate that into our B-25. And we're making copies of Paul Walker's B-17 dedicated video every day. Now, it's turned out to be one of the most popular videos ever. We're as busy as we always are in the shop this time of the year, but it's time to head out to Carlos Serra's contest in Middlesex, one of our favorite contests, and take a break from all the work in the shop. And we'll be back in the shop tomorrow. Off to Middlesex. Well, it looks like we're going to have a nice day for the Middlesex contest, I hope. A little foggy this morning, but it's burning right off. Look at this picture. Yeah, no, this is yeah, a one in a million. <laughs> First look at the plane, so you see what the, what's happening here. It's the same one, but that one had to... An actual flyby during deployment of the nuclear aircraft carrier USS Stennis. The pilot was grounded for 30 days, but he likes the picture and thinks it was worth it. <laughs> Former Navy pilot, Ban Ban <laughs> As his crown jewel on his resume. <laughs> oh, oh my God, that's great. I'd love to, be, to have been able to say, yep, that was... What do you think these guys are saying that are standing here? Look at these guys, like... And how fast can he be going to be flying with that angle of attack? That's uh, got to be... Well, the, when the wings... If you exceed 400 knots on the Tomcat, the wings sweep back automatic. So he's below... He's under 400, yeah. but he's real close to the ground. Oh God, yeah. Wow. Well, that's that's remember that's the, the port side of the carrier we're looking at. That's 70 feet off the water or so. Yeah, but not if you with the wingtip to the deck. Oh, there, there's a couple feet. <laughs> that is definitely cool. Now we want to see you simulate this on your your uh, diajet flight today. <laughs> Wild. The 17 video. He said something. In this case. Oh. I'd rather be able to fly that classic at 5 o'clock. That's right. They're out to start motors here at 10 o'clock, so all the people are pitting up and getting ready for a practice flight. Well, it looks like it's going to be a nice day. The fog is burning up here, burning off. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, I'm sorry, what class do you need to do? No, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, now, hold on. I saw it worked out really well. I hope you said you might. Mike Cooper's playing with a Sato 72 now. We're going to see this fly for the first time today. Cole is here from South Carolina. He's going to, uh, he doesn't have a plane, so we're going to let him borrow Strager for the day. And we're testing a Sato 56 in uh, Strager today. That's our objective with the carbon fiber tank. They're all coming in here, all the big shots. Rich brought a two dozen bagels here for everybody. 
We're sitting around drinking coffee until the 10 o'clock engine start time. Huh? <laughs> it looks like it's going to get to be hotter later. It's already getting warm. Now we'll try to cover the action on all three of the circles if we can. I think we're going to run two circles today, though. You got it! <laughs> they almost lost time today. With a scared kitten. Oh, no. Oh, it's a very scared kitten. Well, why don't you enter expert? We're all flying Strega today. We're all expert, right. It's expert Strega it's day. Right into intermediate. <laughs> this is for old time. I even got the original slant plug KMB29, the same one that Bill Netspan had when he built it in 1950. So. <laughs> there you go. I thought you were talking about your girlfriend. I <laughs> It's time to start engines. And just as engine start time comes, the sun is coming out. Brian Mariah's Cardinal Kit modified to look like the Ryan Becker. Sato 56 and S. And the father and son McBride team with the two Cardinal Evolutions. Both from Elliott Scott's original planes. The best stroker is behaving. What'd you wind up with? A 13.5 on there? Well, you like after, the after seeing yours the other day, I really mine when you pointed the nose up didn't really quite get that break. That yeah. So I'm down to a 12, and I happened to wander into John's. I found the exact same 12.5 top lights. Oh, okay. Which yeah. pretty good. So I haven't tried anything yet. A 14.5 cut to 12 works good. You could borrow my prop later if you want. Try it on there. Well, I'm gonna try this one today, and we're gonna. See and it holds it back nice when the wind is blowing. They was holding it back good, and we're not winning. I don't think we're gonna get any wind today. These props. So we're going to see, I changed the tank and everything on it. made a smaller tank and we just run it forever. And I haven't flown it since, so I don't know what to expect. That's the longest uniflow vent in the world. Yeah. No, and if I was going to run pressure, I would have put it down. It's fine if you remind me. Okay, I promise to. The beautiful Middlesex facility that we have here. The only problem that we have had is when the kids are playing baseball, and it looks like they are playing baseball today, what happens is half of the audience runs over to watch the model planes fly, and then the baseball players get annoyed at the, uh, the model plane people. We always attract a good crowd whenever, they, <laughs> whenever there's a baseball crowd, the kids like to see the models. Uh, the only downside of today's meet is we're going to have to leave early because uh, 
My daughter Stacy is playing in Manhattan tonight, and I have been mandated by uh, Karen to be home early so that I can shower, put clean clothes on, and we can go over to Manhattan and uh, watch the band play. Tonight's one of her bigger engagements right in Manhattan. Luke Strachabone, one of our local flyers that did most of the work on getting us the field at Palisade Park. And we are indebted to him and his wife Sue for that, that's for sure. He has started, he was at the fuselage half done, turning one of the uh, cardinal kits, Gregor kits, whatever you want to call it, into a Stuka. I don't know if that's an approved design change, but we'll see when he flies it. If it flies good, I'll claim full credit. If it's a piece of junk, I'll say he designed it. Anyway, he now has an Air Force with three Stragas in. Two with jets, one with a PA. And the Stuka is slated to have a muffler, not a pipe. So we're going we're gonna to be following that as we go through our building season. When we get back from England, we'll be starting on the B-25. We'll hopefully have our chorus from John Duncan. We're going to make a mold for Miss Ashley Wing. Miss Ashley is about half repaired. Tissue's on. The dope is drying today. And hopefully in the next week or so, we'll get uh, some of the paint touch-up, the cosmetic touch-up done on it, and maybe even get it back into the air before the flying season's over. We are really having some good luck with that with the Sato 56. And you can see the air is dead. There's, there's going to be a lot of backing up going on here. This field can be treacherous when the air is dead. Now another thing that may be interesting, we're going to have, it's slated for this week, Thursday night at 8 o'clock in the Teterboro Museum. We're going to have a, uh, a show and tell on the Z-Tron system, and we'll probably record some or all of it. And we're going to uh, have the club, if the club has enough people show up, talk about the four strokes. Many of the people in the, uh, in our club have enjoyed working with the four strokes, specifically the Sados. A few people like Ruben have OS Maxes. But basically most of them are Sados and it looks like I'd say the good majority of them are relatively successful. And we're learning as we go, sharing the information. And that little demo will probably be one of the better ones that the club has this year. There are quite a few show and tells. When they used to have the meetings on Friday night, I, it was difficult for me to make it because that's Karen and I have a crash night, and it's Friday night. And I work all week to midnight. I like to have one night of just sitting around and relaxing and being with the girl I love, Miss Karen, catching up on email, catching up on yard work, pond work, maybe even once a month washing a car and cleaning it up. Anyway, this is the PA that Rich has a new front bearing in. It was having leaking some oil out of the front bearing. He's since repaired it. Looks like it's running okay today. I think it's very similar to the problem Dan had, and the cure was very simple. We placed the front bearing.
Coach Giacomoni. Does Michael need some uh, videotaping on his wedding, or is he all set? I think he's all set. Okay. Pretty long. Pilot's meeting, please. Thank you all, thank you for coming. It's very nice to see that you are still supporting this contest. We really appreciate your presence here today. Uh, first of all, I have to uh, be very thankful to all the judges that agreed to judge an expert. The judges will be Peabody and Keith Ferguson. Uh, advanced will be myself and Dan Banjo. OTS, Bill Lindman again and uh, Marty. Marty has to go home early, so we, we're going to try to do this as quick as possible. Beginner will be done by Johnny O and Andrew again. And uh, in classic, uh, I'll do it with uh, Keith uh, Ferguson. I appreciate everyone's help on this one. Uh, on past years, we have also emphasized that anyone that has a noisy airplane by G4 people actually go out in the forces and try to... Other than that, I have to ask you all to be very ready to fly. Please, let's not waste uh, much time between time and dinner. So please, let us help this. Uh, now we missed the first half of Brian's flight here on a coffee break. Which means somewhere later in the day we're going to have to take a bathroom break. I've noticed a direct relationship. He's got a, this is advanced, the beginning of advanced. He's got a Sato 56 in here. It's made from a foam wing cardinal kit, modified to look like a World War I plane. He was running a 13.5. I think he went down to a... A 12.5, but I'm not sure. The objective here was to make a plane as easy to build as possible. I think it took them a, like less than a week to make the whole plane. He sheeted the wing all up, and two days later we had the body done, and then like a couple days later the plane was finished. That's a nice sounding tune pipe, did not he? Yeah, that's a tune Sato. <laughs> so you're going to fly Strega today? I, I, no, but I got to go home 4 o'clock. I can't stay. The kids are playing in Manhattan tonight. Oh, you told me they were. But if they're taking a lunch break, why don't you take yeah, a flight? Right. When did you convert that? Uh, last time I was here, I had a A couple of days ago. Here's a 56. And it looks like I got the carbon tank in it even. Oh, yeah, okay. I was hoping I'd get... Yeah, yeah. They're going to work great. Boy, with that weight out of the nose, what a difference. Holy cow, it changes the whole plane. An ounce and three quarters over the tank that was in it. Brian Manal, first official. Hey, that motor ran nice, Bri. Yeah, a little slow. No, nah, not for this air. There's no air. You just should have backed up I a little no bit. power in the overhead, though. When I went to my wing over, it was sagging. So just go one click in. Yeah. Now that's on a 12-inch prop? Long. What'd you have on a 12-inch prop? Yeah, it's a 12.5. 12.5, okay. I wanted to be... This Brian, if he gets the needle set too rich, I'm going to shoot him on the next flight. I'll just simply turn the guns to the pilot and shoot him. And what do you got this one? This is a 26? Yeah, the yellow is 26. Uh, I had the Sato 30 in it, but I put the Sato 30 in the little, uh, in the little Cherokee. Okay. So I'm just going to have to buy another Sato 30 from you. Well, I know a guy that's got a lot of them in his cellar. Well, I've got 15 of them down here. Well, let's see, can, since the 91, since the 91 is three times the size of the 30, can we trade? Three for one? <laughs> <laughs> you buy me one of those three-cylinder ones from my big Sequoia, and we will. I'll tell you something, that's, that's something to get you thinking, isn't it? Joe's already thinking wild seriously about it. He's already drawn. All right. Might get a chance to look, look 
cross me into Kitty here? Yeah, I saw Mr. Kitty. Oh no, Mr. Bear! Oh, he's got to see Mr. Kitty's face. He is really afraid. I'm oh scared. my God! Oh, Rimbo, he's gonna crash me again. You know what he's really afraid of now? He's really afraid of that tune pipe. Yeah. Oh. It reminds him of getting an enema at the animal shelter. <laughs> Mcmillan, eat your heart out. I'll tell you. <laughs> That's the. I, oh, I threw yesterday. The throttle and brakes work like a charm. You got the throttle working yeah. on it now. You gonna fly it later? Oh yeah, definitely. The electronics are inside the cockpit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, if you take it apart later, let me look inside. Oh sure. And there's a transmitter under the wing, but it works. That little Sato is a sweetheart. That's the 30th case. This is like a baby typhoon here. <laughs> Bob Lampione, one of the really nicely finished Jodak kits here. Beautifully finished. We had this last week at the uh, Willow Grove meet. Flew really nice. All the heavy hitters are starting to arrive here. And the only problem, we have two things happening. Again, we're, we're going to have to leave early, but that's okay. And we're also going to, this Thursday, we're going to be putting on, hopefully, maybe even get Sergio Zegras to come down to our club meeting and demonstrate how the Zetron evolved from a puck flyer, indoor RC kind of thing to what's now a very widely accepted control line thing. Hey, the truth is, when I was a kid, I built one of these, and I wasn't so sure how to put all those little sticks around the top block and the bottom block. Yeah. <laughs> it looked like a Lincoln log kit gone wild on, on drugs. <laughs> Eight inch tail moment, mine comes out tail heavy. Hard to believe. Saber stunt. Bob Zambelli flying the little OS Max 26 four stroke. What are you going up? Yeah, this is a Max 26. He put the Sato in his Piper. Anyway, we're trying, as always, trying to pick up information and experiences that other people have had. Jose Modesto's here already with his new four-stroke. Never been flown. That ought to be an adventure. Everything's an adventure. Life's an adventure.
Bellamy, first official. He's rolling in here with his new plane. Let's see what four stroke he's got in there today. And the now dominant plane in the advanced class. Alan Mary Knight's Voodoo Child. Cardinal Kid in Manico. Bro, why don't you carry a few? You need a couple of one chair or something there, Jose? Oh, yeah. Actually, four. Let's see what you got going on there. This is uh, a recruit. Daddy, Daddy, she's actually like five. Yeah. That Al Knight stole your, na stole your name. He called his plane Voodoo Chili. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. One of those. That worked is. okay on there? Yeah. It's all right. Come see, come sell, huh? That's all. Okay. It turns on and it turns off in the end. And I get all the stuff in the middle. Okay. Zap, zap here. Okay. We go through there. Yep. Exhaust there. I've been running it on this. Okay. I don't have an electric starter, so I'm kind of chicken. In an effort to keep it from whipping up in the wind, Bobby's leaving the wings off this year. <laughs> That's, great. That's great. So there's no door in your bathroom anymore. You made a test stand. That's what I did. That's wow. What are you going to do? Break this in on I company time? I have about a half a gallon. Uh, what, are you, what are you? You've done. Is it? Wow. Done. He you're said done. two gallons. I you're got done. A, I'll try, I'll Bob, you're two. done. You have no squeak. I made I made a venturi with a small piece of tubing, the same uh, inside yeah. the diameter as yeah. this. Was not as neat. Was just a one-inch long piece of tubing, but run perfectly well. This is about 322s inside, and a tiger needle, and a tiger needle, and the OS needle runs as well, exactly. Okay, it's no difference. And even though you crashed the plane, the only damage is you got a broken. I just need to get your case oh, for this the only, motor. The only damage. Okay, no, the only, and the motor turns over nice. Yeah, was so only. you need a crankcase. What's was the only deal? the engine and the airplane. The Darmok didn't get damaged. That's only. That's all. The you didn't have to repave the field, did you? No. Almost. To be 1980. Total domination in the advanced class here. <laughs> I like the little canopy, the little, that gives it a nice uh, fly. Yeah, it looks nice in square maneuvers. He powers fly baby. Al, you could have done a lot worse, trust me. <laughs> trust me, you didn't miss a thing. <laughs>
at the point where I'm getting dehydrated out here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Tooling, tooling, fly it out. Now at this point, right now, I would be just forgetting it's going too lean. There might be some junk in the filter. I would be thinking good time to bail out. But then everybody's not as conservative as I am. You pick up some junk in a filter or whatever, boy. It always gets you at the worst time. Anyway, Al was being extremely successful with this plane on the local contest scene here. He's been dominating, in fact. Built right from the kit with a Tiger 60. like we just started on the part of the day where the breeze is coming up. Some nice breeze blowing right now. Hey, we're almost getting to the end of the advanced class. I'm going to start on the experts. Like whatever was in the needle worked its way out. Again, we use that little automotive motorcycle ceramic filter before you put the fuel in a plane, and I don't have a filter in the plane, and it seems to work relatively well so far. How light first official. will be Mike Cooper who just put a Sato 72 as a replacement for his Tiger 60. Unfortunately he doesn't have a lot of time on this, it's new to him. And he did have a, an unfortunate accident with the plane where it ran out of gas. But it's all repaired, it's all back in one piece. Like I did, yeah. I think your camel just got loose, you better go catch him. Lawrence of Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Hampshire. Bill used Flores to... said he invented this. Yeah, he did, but his camel never gets away. Oh. Keeps him on 018s. Alright, Carlos, where did you go here?
the Sato 72 and a, not sure what the weight, but it's not a light Cardinal, this is a heavy Cardinal. so far the flight is and this is the first time I'm seeing this it's nose heavy it would probably fly a little better have a harder corner without the spinner I think Mike already has the hinge lines taped but if they weren't taping a hinge line certainly would help seems like the motor's running pretty nice Mike originally had some trouble and had crashed the plane and the problem turned out to be that the glow plug was loose. He had not tightened the plug with a uh, key wrench. Traced back to that. And of course, as with any Sato, you want to run a Max F plug. That's the plug of choice. That's the fun of doing this, is we're learning from each other, sharing stories, sharing little things that work, don't work, sharing venturi sizes, and just, it's just little stuff that has to be done, and once it's done by one person or two, and you can repeat it, you've added something in that's uh, positive to the world of model airplanes. The plane looks nose heavy, but the motor runs as rock steady as, it certainly runs as rock steady as mine does.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Enter into media. All right, Danny. Good luck. Hey. Jose Modesto. Get ready for his first official. It had Oldsmobile engines in it. He's always ready, eh?
got some good air here. Going through, looks like he's going through his own air. Yep. Yeah, wrong place. We don't know. Oh yeah. That was not a good, uh, good location. Yeah, it has been funky all afternoon. Actually, we could use some wind right now. Okay, Jose and Augusta, first official. We end the day with Bob Zambelli flying his truly unique creation. And it's been hot. Thanks to all the judges. Van Banjak, one expert. I'm not sure who the other people were. It was a great day. And we're off to do family stuff. We're back in the shop finally, and we it looks like we have a nice, hot, humid day to put some clear on this. This has been drying while we've been down at Middlesex. Had a great contest. That was a good one. Now, I'm only going to take off. I still have to paint the stripes in by hand. I'll take care of it. I only want to put clear on this half of this outer panel. I don't, I'm going to try not to put any more than I have to on here. So the first thing is to get all the, the foil off that's not going to be used. Now this has been a, real, a little bit of a touch and go thing because what we've been working around and it's been terrible, the humidity has been unbelievable. And with this kind of humidity, I've been having to paint inside the house, which isn't good in terms of I, I can only do this at certain hours and then air the house all out before Karen gets home or else she kills me. She just comes in with a gun and says, oh, you're painting in the house again? Sorry. Gives me that that English stuff. Sorry. Anyway, I have two little stripes here to paint, and I'm hoping I can either airbrush them or paint them by hand. Now, this has been drying. 
and we know we have the red done. So we need to be real selective now. I want to pull those stripes out. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do is just back mask right around this tape and then pull this tape out. This is the part I love the most. Seeing if the spray, oh yeah, it's ready to spray. Well, it looks like later on this week we're going to be able to get a fist point on this. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing anything on this, really, until I know that, that the wing is going to be serviceable. I really don't want to... Uh, I'm not even going to bump it out. I'm going to put another coat of clear on. I'll put two or three coats of clear. And that'll have to do for now. Bob Brookins would probably be saying, Wendy, that's not one coat. And he'd be right. And every time you do a wet coat and you go to the next wet coat, you run the risk of trapping moisture. But so far we've been lucky. I've got the, uh, the air conditioner blasting away. Find out, we'll find out if we're lucky today or not. Because what we really, the objective here is we want to get out and fly the plane and see if the wing is going to hold under stress. Or if we've done, see a lot of times after a crash, you've damaged something internally that you don't even know is damaged until you go fly the plane. And then you've spent all that time bumping and inkling and whatever for nothing. So this is certainly serviceable. And since we're going to have the molded wing very soon, we'll kind of be putting this technology on the back burner. Whew, notice how much I'm losing weight here. Always put a little bit extra on all the cap strips. The idea here is to wet the whole wing so it, it and then comes into tension at the same time. If you only did this part, it would tend to warp it, I think. Maybe, maybe not. But I know doing it this way, it works every time. Having said that, we'll see if I need a trim, a flap tweak or a trim tab or anything. There's all the overall cap strips while we're doing it. See some of the air moving things we have, and we got the air conditioner there, the dehumidifier under the table. And I was watching this just go back and forth and thinking, it's like a grandfather clock here. But anyway, that's all the clear we're going to put on there for now. That's I'm going to let that dry overnight. Tomorrow we'll assemble a plane and see if, uh, you know, any other changes or modifications even. I'm hoping two days from now, we're going to be ready to fly this. Or refly it, retrim it. let this dry overnight and carefully peeling back the tape and pulled up one little spot that we're not even going to see inside the fuselage where the dope is pretty much oil soaked. Now there's some significant things in this this repair that I thought I'd mention. It's only two days. This is the original finish and it's nice. It's a good finish. And this is the one that we did in two days. It still needs to be 1200 sanded and buffed. Of course, out here we put more clear on. It's on the outboard wing, it won't matter. And the reason was, the logic here is, with the team trails coming up and be wanting to test motors, even if we don't go to the team trails, we want to test more and more testing on the Sato, the Venturis, different setups, different props on different planes. I didn't bother to do this, because this would have taken two extra days, painting the white, the silver, this, putting more clear. And what I'll do is I'll wait for a rainy day, and I can just back mask this, and replicate that relatively easily. 
I also then probably would try to put in the uh, U. If I do that, I have a, I save the patterns for this, and that's always important. But for relatively quick, and you can see how quickly this went back together, it's not perfect by any means, but what we can do is once we have the molded wing that we're going to be making very soon, we're probably going to start it next week, once we have a molded wing and it's got all the paint and artwork and finishing on it, we can put the carbon wing into the fuselage and we can say now we have a carbon wing, carbon fuselage, wood wing, wood fuselage. We could then put this wing into the wooden fuselage and maybe even one of my thoughts was to set up one of the planes with a different engine that we might be testing or one with a pipe, one with a four stroke. We have a lot of choices, but we'll, what will what allow us to do is we'll ultimately wind up with the most possible options with the least amount of work that, you, that I think is, is uh, really practical. So the next thing is I'm going to get Strega out of the car, and that's the motor package we've been testing our props and tanks and Venturis with. Take all the hardware out of that plane. I have another tank I want to test. I one that Joe out of Moosco made. I can put all that hardware into this plane, assemble this plane, and possibly tomorrow or the next day even get out to the field and get some flights. Vega did his job, what he gets paid to do. We have this engine running just about as well as uh, I can expect. We did get to test a bunch of these experimental props, wide props, narrow props. We've come with our own little database now. And one of the props that, th this always happens, you test a bunch, a bunch of, and all of a sudden you hit one that's just right on the money. Well, what we did, the one that's right on the money for this, turned out to be a 13-4 APC, a narrow blade. And on this plane, under the conditions we had at the circle bar field, this turned out to be the best combination. Now what's nice about having a test plane, now when we start with Miss Ashley, I don't have to start and be spending a good flying day changing props. I can basically work on tank shims, other things that I want to work on. So all that time of having a test plane, very, very useful. Now I'll take all of the powertrain out of here, the carbon tank, everything out of here for now. I have one other tank to test. That tank is working just about as well as anything. So we have learned a lot, and we put him back for the, whatever the next engine we're going to test is. Maybe a laser. I don't know. The laser is a heavy engine, and this plane tends not to need the nose weight, so maybe it's more appropriate to put that engine in tradition. I don't know. That's coming, though. Well, he's really getting beat up after all these years. So many tune pipes. And, of course, the nice thing is you can always just put the jet right back in. We haven't even taken a coupler off the pipe. Put the jet back in, and now you can do comparison. Which do you like the best? Instead of taking this guy's word for it or that guy, you do your own experiment. You do it right at the field. You do it on the same day, and then you really know. You're not dependent on somebody else to tell you. And he'll be all cleaned up and waxed and ready for our next, uh, the next part of whatever our test program is going to be. Really significant. Now we've had this tank in three different planes. We've used it steadily for over a year. This is the original tank that Wayne made, and from his tooling, we copied the uh, the tooling that we have. We have a copy of it. It's still totally serviceable, it runs well, and boy, the weight saving, if, if you've ever flown a plane where you've taken an ounce and a half of nose weight out, it just dramatically changes the performance of the plane. The only thing that's, that's really worked well for us is this body has absolutely no deterioration at all. There isn't even oil inside of it. So it's basically like a brand new plane, except for the, <laughs> obviously for the wing. Anyway, we're going to put this back together now, put the hardware in, and I have a different tank. I have this tank that Joe Adamusco made in my test bag here of things. It's a, it's a kind of a, similar to Bellinger's tank. I'm going to see if that fits, number one. And I'm going to take the prop that was the most successful on Strega and the lightweight spinner, and the 56 shimmed roughly to the same height even use the same vent. So by switching all this hardware over, 
I hope I've eliminated some of the uh, the variables in it. As I'm putting it together, there's a couple of things that I I really thought would be worth mentioning that I changed on this. One is I put a an oversized arrow shaft tube going right down through. And the reason for that is the way we had it to prime the motor you had to disconnect the pressure line and force fuel in. This way I can just drop some prime in there. And of course I'll just touch that up with the airbrush. Just a little bit of paint on there. Nothing real fancy. Not trying to get carried away uh, you know with a, we're trying to make a concourse one. Just we're trying to make a functional plane that we can use to develop these motors with. the Dremel pull through there. Get to fitting up the tank and the motor. If you were mine, I'd never let you well, all we're waiting for now is a test day, and today isn't it. It's a little back in one piece. I'll tell you, it's a good feeling to have it just have it back in one piece. There's a, a definite comfort factor to having it in one piece. But old Miss Ashley lives to fly again. Unfortunately, that's not true of the real Miss Ashley. I've been tank tooling, man. James comes in, it's 150 degrees out. Now, what is it? This is a boat motor? Yeah, this is my little boat. And it's water cooled. It's water cooled. Oh, cool. You have an electric start. Okay. The motor. It's a 15? Yeah. And it's yeah. got a little carburetor. You, you're right. It's far to see. You got water cooling in the head. Now it has a centrifugal clutch. Right. I understand. Right. If your engine stalls, you have an electric motor backup. You kick this in, it flips this gear over. Okay. And you have an electric motor to get you back if you're gas. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Wow. Is that cool? So, do you have the boat for that? Or? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just... Oh, man. Now look at what he brings. He brings parts for carbon tanks. What a guy. It was built... Uh, no, the boat was built cheap, so the exhaust system melted half of it. Yeah. So I had to put, make my own exhaust for it. Well, we have the tooling finalized, polished. We're ready to make yeah, tanks, ready to mold right. Sados. You got the end cap guy done? Oh, I love this stuff. All right. Let me wax it up and we can lay it apart. So we're going to have our club demo Thursday. That'll be uh, another yeah. thing to show. Here's your end caps. All right, so we got we got an ability to make four end caps at a time now. Oops. There's your mold. Okay. And that wax released good enough without yeah. the PVA? You just yep. need the wax. Whatever Here's, you used last time. Yeah, that's what Wayne said would work, was that the uh, high temperature wax. You clean this stuff off. Okay. okay. To do the press? I didn't press it. I hit it with a hammer. Oh, but you need to put it somewhere. You need it somewhere solid. Yeah. And how about a vise? Just open a vise to that dimension. No, nah, not good enough. You want it, I don't know how solid this table is, if you have a nice solid table. Oh, it could be wood, that's right. Yeah. yeah anything solid. How about over this hole in the table? Well, well if you could get a hole that, that'll fit that slot. I'll cut a hole. I'll cut a hole. Right. I care about then the you table. you put this thing here on it, right. nice and solid. And tap it through. And this is it? Oh, no. Put this in there, you... Can you, you really have to hit it. Get a BFH. Yeah, okay. And... A B if people don't know what a BFH is, we're not going to say it on okay. video. <laughs> it's a big funny hammer. Ah! Uh, and it's going to take two, three good shots. Okay. And once it's loose, then you can push out your finger. Yeah. Well, of course. Okay. That's all. That's what I thought would break be the it. Case. But this little thing that you put on here held it. You need to obviously down. And then. Okay. Get this. Okay, and this is the wax. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to wax this up. Polo, I got this from George Spore. And this is, this is what. Um, 
that Wayne was using, so he obviously gave us a good heads up on that. Now it was nice of Jimmy to help out yesterday. We got all our parts drying. The tank body, the main body is here. This all st stuff has to dry overnight. And I hope we're going to get a nice day to practice today that we're predicting some decent weather. We got an email from Paul Walker today. He's ready to start testing tanks. And he had the best luck with the tank similar to the one we have in this plane right now that's got the, the pincher on the end. Now we had a test day today and it was fine. It wasn't a bad day. But I wasn't really crazy about the way the tank ran. And what I did, and this trick worked on Joe, because Joe Adamusco made this tank. We ran the muffler pressure to the overflow. It made it a little bit more consistent. When I ran it to the overflow, it was mm, not perfect. I and I'm not sure why. Again, because this is a one-of-a-kind tank, I'm not going to spend a lot of time even fooling around with it. Now that I have the tank tooling done, I'm going to make up. It looks like what I need is about a four and a quarter ounce tank, and what that'll do is knock a whole other ounce out of the nose. Now it's been, now that it's back in one piece, a significant thing, getting this weight out of the nose, tremendous, tremendous performance increase. Absolutely, there's no substitute for just getting the weight out. You could put solder on the tail wheel, you can put lead back there, clay, wear, but getting the weight out of the nose is the most important thing. Now I also had extremely good luck. This is a 13-4 stock prop. Out of the box, I just cut it so I could fit under the spinner. And I had fooled with the wood props. So put this prop, running at 10,300, just absolutely ran right out of the box. There was no change to it at all that in balancing it. That's all it was to do to it. So the only downside of this prop now, there's, there's a distinct downside. This is a, a probably three times the weight of the wood prop. So again, that's going to make the carbon fiber tank even more significant, even a better gain. Now, it's going to be a little bit later this week. I think Thursday, i got to look at my schedule. Yeah, it's Thursday. We have to do that Z-Tron demo, and I think that's going to be very, very interesting. That's going to be one of the... We're going to try to combine four cycle uh, discussion with a Z-Tron discussion, and I hope everybody can, well, pick up some good little tips out of it. Now, I was so happy with this, with this setup here, the 13.4 and the 56, that I've even considered as, as one of the, like, one of the tests I'd like to do, again, if we do get to go to the team trials, or before we go to the team trials, I'd love to try that in the Typhoon. I'd love to try that at least one day, just to see if that would be a viable combination. But again, we're running out of time, and most of the time we spend during the day, of course, we have to work. And we just don't have these big gaps of time like we really should have to prepare for the team trials anyway. So we're just trying to learn as much as we can and do an, an accurate. Now this prop, for instance, I bet you we've never had it on a 72. It would be a good prop for the 72 also. We're learning something every day, and Paul Walker has pretty pretty much confirmed the same thing I do. Is the more you run them, the better they get. He's been having some excellent runs with his, Pat Johnson. And we hope maybe we'll even get Ron Vargo to make us up a Venturi. Bag of stuff ready for going down to the, uh, the club demo later today. We'll load up the car. I think you'll enjoy this. I'm going to try to, uh, usually these discussions get pretty lively. There is, uh, we're trying to keep a good supply of sados on hand, but they seem to go out of here just as soon as we get them. Now it's nice that we can have these meetings and demos basically at an aviation-oriented place, and it's the Peterborough Aviation Hall of Fame Museum that we use for uh, Circle Burner meetings now. We've had it on video many times, but uh, it's always a thrill to go down here. They always have new stuff. And it is one of the nicest facilities, much nicer than... It's just nice being around airplanes and watching planes take off and land. And every once in a while a Mustang or a, something will come in here, that uh, B-17 or something. Peterborough Airport, the next town over from Rutherford, New Jersey.
Bob Zambelli's flown in for the meeting. That's his Cherokee down there. Or one that looks just like it. I don't know, I don't know Bob's end number, but we've done some flying in this plane. Elliot Scott, Bob and I went for a nice tour of New York City. Well, Bob's flown up from Philadelphia, which is about a uh, one hour flight, I think. Uh, I'm going to play a few things to uh, discuss tonight. One of them being a four stroke thing. We've got several people who have four strokes. Clark Flyers and Z Trains. We have Sergio Zegers here. He's the uh, inventor, developer, whatever you want to call it, of the, uh, the Z Tron infrared controller. This is what they normally, originally, it was intended to, to use these type of planes. A small electric motor, you can see how big that motor is. It's just for a set of reference, that's going to find it. And this is the original one that we had, that we had belt mounted. And he has some other ones that he's going to be displaying tonight. Uh, sir, why don't you introduce yourself? Sergio Zegras? Hi, Sergio. Hi, Sergio. Sergio! Sergio. <laughs> Sergio. <laughs> Sergio. <laughs> He's paying for the pizza tonight. <laughs> uh, we'll see what kind of pizza we're going to have in right? Yeah. Chuck Zimmerman. <laughs> see? I, I remember <laughs> that. Chuck is the... Yay! Hey. 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 They all the way into Philadelphia, Florida, they're all the time. you got to get up here, Danny, and show us your shirt. Oh, because this now the whole world is going to learn about the Philly Flyers. Wow. Oh, God. They are a impressive group. College spell. Or was it half on the price? Hey, and Bob Belly. Where is Bill? And Wendy's going to give this, uh, going to give the uh, program here. Or start off. I don't know what the agenda is. I just said, is Sir going to talk first, or when he's going to when he's going to take care of this? We see that fly. But it also, <laughs> before you escape, you have to buy mass quantities of lot of uh, tickets from Steve White, for raffle tickets, oh. so we can pay for the room. Okay, Wendy. And Wendy, you have to get out of hand. Sure. Okay, thanks to everybody for coming. This, this was Mary's idea. Um, she approached me with this idea Sunday. Uh -huh. uh, looks like we had a great turnout, and, and I thought one of the things would have been nice is we have a guest speaker. In fact, we have several uh, people that have never been here before, so we can interact and see their, their type of modeling. Now, one of the people that's here tonight, Sergio Zegras, we all know Joe Besher, uh, but Sergio Zegras, I didn't know him. I know him through Joe Besher. What, about a year ago, Joe, I approached you with the idea of using a, using a throttle control? About a year. And you said, ah, call Sergio! Don't worry about it! Sergio's up! And, and I thought, oh yeah, yeah, he'll never get back to me, and oh my God. But the next night, the phone's ringing off the hook. Two days later, I got a unit, and it, did, and it was only one problem. Sergio assumed I knew how to solder, <laughs> and he assumed I knew what a battery was. <laughs> now he's laughing, but so I had to and, and it's a true story. I had to find, in our club, Jim Damarell is probably one of the most uh, electronically adept people. He had to explain to me what a servo was. That was that was a hard part. And and we even videotaped some of these little things. Wendy burning himself with a soldering iron. Wendy was soldering a servo to the side of the plane. The whole thing. Anyway, it was an adventure. But the bottom line was it worked perfectly. Now, a, a year later, we're at the Nationals. And I think Rich can verify, or Danny was there. Uh, well, we didn't win, but we never win anyway, so that's not even it. <laughs> but I think we shut the field out every time we flew. We pretty much had, except for Paul Walker's B-17, there really was two shows going on. And I don't think that's an unfair statement. <coughs> and I thought it was, it added a new dimension to our hobby in the fact that virtually everybody from Augie, who let me fly his cub with the electronics that go through the wire, um, and I tried that system. It didn't seem like it was appropriate for stunt ships because the wires are a hindrance. But when I saw how the Z-Tron worked, I just said, this perfect, couldn't be better. Now what happened is, Sergio originally gave me, uh, and can I pick this up? Yeah. Jump out of here. 
He gave me a unit that looked, and this is the unit, right, exactly. Yeah. And I kept looking at this unit and saying, the plane is over there, and I'd make the throttle work. And I said, great, but now I still have to fly a plane. And, and we went to where Rich got us this field and Palisade block, and I tried every place you can put this. On my hat, my pocket, on my belt, on my knee, put it in my mouth like with a waffle. I did everything you could do. And I, it never dawned on me that the whole answer was, because when they do park flyers, and I, I'm sure Sergio will show us it's so easy, I went down to watch them fly the park flyers one Thursday night, and I'm sure Sergio will tell you where they have their meeting. Trust me, guys, if you've never seen a park flyer or an electric plane fly, it's absolutely beautiful. There's no noise. You can hit kids as they ride by. You know, John the White, watch, let's have a point. Because it doesn't hurt. It's a plane the only way it counts. And, and there are twin engine planes. I know the Delta one with the two pushers uh, had to be going 50, 80, 90 miles an hour. It, it was not what I thought it would be. It was very interesting. But anyway, back to this. I then, with Sergio's help over the last year, made this box smaller, put the lights on my shirt, on my belt, on my hat, on my shoe, and my nose, everything. And I eventually, it took the better part of a year, and I came up with, for me, the system that seemed to work is you just put it on your hat, because wherever you look, the beam is going. I made my own, uh, Sergio made a little switch, and I needed to have, I think there's eight little batteries in here, Sergio? Yep. And it fits in the palm of your hand, and, and actually, to tell you the truth, two of the judges that judged the national finals came over and said, where's the thing that makes it work? And I was, I was wearing a hat, and they never noticed it. <laughs> so I was wondering how good they were watching the flight. <laughs> but anyway, I, I will just be careful. I'll pass this around. I'll better yet, just come up and look at it. It's basically an on-off switch so that the battery isn't used for eight minutes if you're not going to use it. But when you decide to use it, you snap it on with your thumb, select either full throttle, half throttle, third throttle, any combination of that. I believe there's three channels. I only use one. Uh, but Danny has, Ted's plane has one channel, the GB has one channel. Yeah. Uh, you could improvise and make retract, Ruben must have planes with retracts and pilots that jump out. And um, To me, this, this is very applicable to uh, scale planes even more than stunt. Because there's a certain amount of resistance in stunt. They always want to do things the way Grandpa did and everything. Uh, but eventually they'll realize this is a lot of fun. It's relatively inexpensive. Uh, the setup, one plane was under $100. Um, and it totally added a whole new dimension. I mean, I would go to the field, and a lot of times I'd be halfway through a stunt pad and say, oh, let me just play with this. This is, this is cool. I'm going to fly inverted real slow. And I'd, and I'd be inventing things and forgetting the plane had run out of gas. And so you could, you can have a lot of fun with this. Um, I think somewhere down the road, uh, as we speak, I think uh, Lucky Pilot has been interested in this. Um, there's two guys. He wants two channels. Yeah. He wants two channels. Yep. Uh, a couple of the scale guys from out by Brodax have been aggressively trying to come up with different systems. But Sergio, and I'll let Sergio show the system he just came up with. Uh, it's even smaller. And, and the light emitters are on. It's about the size of a pack of cigarettes. Is that fair? Well, it depends what cigarettes. And, and if you hold it on your chest, where your chest is, I mean, I'm assuming you're not going to fly the plane looking that way. If you hold it, most people that fly stunt, what's that called? They, they, they do this thing, I guess, somebody in the world of stunt invented this idea that you fly with your hand here. And, and if you don't tell them, you yeah, know, they they wouldn't way. know it was there. Yeah, like check your heartbeat on a wing lever or something. Um, Amen. Anyway, but having said that, that's how this evolved in control line. And, and I'm hoping it'll, it'll be like for people like Orgy that have other systems. I brought this book. We can pass this around. This is Fred Cromwell's book. Um, I think Orgy's plane is even in here. I'm not sure. Um, it details other ways of using throttle control, scale, uh, how to wire things. I found the book to be real helpful, especially if you don't understand electronics. Uh, and it's available from Fred Cromwell. He's a member of Tampa. So having said that, Sergio, if you would like to uh, explain how this works, I don't understand even now. People think it's a channel changer. I've heard it called a channel changer. I've heard uh, a garage door opener that, that when you fly, you park flies all the doors and the cars open up and trunks open and stuff, but I don't know if any of that's true. Doesn't do it. Near a firehouse. This is doing the park <laughs> 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 Yeah, 
Make sure he pays you too. <laughs> the original design it was done by Bob Van Gelius. Bob Van Gelius. It did this small chili bean that was about half this size. Half the size. So Chuck improved on the design with the airfoil wing, he made bigger, stronger, and better, like the bionic man. So you see two versions here, and both of them are in front of control. One of them uses motor control, proportional motor control, and proportional actuator on the rudder. Probably you've never seen this thing here for your life, but it's like a small servo. It's proportionally, yeah. right, and activate. And it's a magnetic It is proportional. The receiver can drive two of those actuators plus the speed control. So you can have elevator, rudder, and speed control. This small model doesn't need two controls. So rudder and more control does everything you want to do for indoor, mostly indoor control. Uh, what this actuator is, it's a little coil. It has a lot of turns. It's a very thin wire, 42 gauge. It's thinner than the human hair. And it's built by a super designer by the name Fritz Mueller. Maybe you heard the name because he does a lot of CO2 control uh, indoor models and outdoor also models. So he built this thing, and if you see it under the microscope, it's amazing that a 75-year-old man can do this type of work in Southern and, and it's, it's absolutely amazing. Later on, you can take a look and you see what I mean by this. Anyway, so, uh, so this receiver can uh, control two proportional actuators like this, and the, 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 the motor, electronic speed control. This other model here is of the same type. It's an even larger uh, chill beam. Again, built by Chuck Silverman here. And this has two servos and a speed control. This is the receiver here. It's a different receiver, as you can see. This is the battery. There are five cells. And this is a double motor. Two motors in one. Uh, let's see. So two this motors geared to one shaft? Yeah. Yeah, you, you'll see it later on. This we put together, this motor assembly was chopped last night, just for this demonstration, because I had a bigger motor and it was too powerful. We were trying different motor combinations. But one thing I don't really do much is fly. <laughs> I spent so much time on designing and coming up with all these things that I have very little time to fly. If it wasn't because of Chuck building the planes for me and Joe built a lot of planes for me, I would never fly anything. So, well, let's try the demo this thing. Nerfle will leave us alone, and this thing will operate. This is the control that we explained before. This is what I call the third generation uh, uh, transmitter, because the third generation was a little black box from another joystick controller. Second generation used this box 
but uh, with two channels, and this third generation has three channels. The third one for the throttle is here, and has 15 LD output. The utility clicker has only one. So you can imagine this has at least 15 times more power than the utility clicker. It was tested outdoors to more than 400 feet. So any indoor area, it would, it would uh, be suitable for this control. Plus, it bounces. It doesn't have to be direct side, uh, line of sight. It bounces off the walls, off the ceiling, off any surface. So we formed this at the big hangar at the Lakehurst. We flew it to the Toledo indoor place. It was a huge place. We flew, well, we chuck flies every week at the Tina Calvary. Lucky enough, it doesn't have to work, so you can do that uh, all morning. Never be there. That truck some guy. Huh? Uh, you can see that you don't really have to point like your TV clicker, you don't have to point the model to control. Alright, so you see the rather? Almost like a hearing game. It makes, makes the button sound because it's one kilohertz uh, tone that goes through the coils. Mm. You can see that, and then you have the motor to go. And you can see, I don't have to point at this thing because I can point anywhere down there. It should work, right? And it does. Point up, point down, it would work. This, this is a very small area. Is, is that infrared or is that infrared radio infrared. transmitter? It's right. infrared. No antennas. Okay. Not even a license. You don't need a license for this. So that's okay. different than radio control where you can yes. get a license yes. in a certain channels and if somebody's flying next to you. Now infrared like that, if somebody has the same thing next to you, won't it interfere with your flying? Yeah, it yeah you can, uh, reliably, you can only fly one model at a time. Okay. You can do more models, more more models in the same frequency. Let's say it's not real frequency because it's the light medium <coughs> goes by the wavelength, which is like like large frequency. And different uh, uh, different like uh, televisions and stereos and electronics mm -hmm. have a different protocol for the for the infrared. Yeah. So uh, why can't you do that with the plane? They use a pulse train. They do have different protocol. But if you took two of these clickers and you turn them on at the same light and at the same time, I don't think it will control either one of the appliances. Because it's like lights. If you have two flashlights yeah. and you put them together, it will jam each other. Right. And outdoors, if you're using it outdoors, what's the potential for the sun, which puts out a lot of infrared light? Well, you know, scrambling things. We can tell you about this because that's where it flies. Outdoors will be right. Seems to be working. There's, there's times at the peak time of the day when the sun is the brightest, and I've never had it happen at the circle burn field where it's where it's grass, but at Rich's field where um, you'd be at midday, I've had it where it'll glitch for a tenth of a second, but it'll never glitch and not work. It just you'll be you'll give it the throttle and put it. It'll have to fly past the sun and then move here and then catch. It's like, it, a, it's like a fail safe, right? Yeah, it yeah. It defaults to the last setting. Yeah, in other words, I wouldn't want to run elevators or, or some other thing that you needed instantaneous. But if, in the case of a throttle, if you throttle back at, you know, 10 feet later or 10 feet. Comes right back. And at the Nationals where it was really sunny and hot, it was 1,000% reliable. Yeah, the receivers I make for the low line, I made them specifically to stay at the last position. So you can have the transmitter off like it really does, and it will keep the last position, won't move. Uh, for radio control, I make them with fail safe. So when you lose the signal, the motor goes down. So you can fly outdoors. If you lose the signal, it will stop. It will stop. And, uh, so you won't lose the normal. Uh, this is the one with the servos, and uh, we'll see it. This is left and right servo, up and down. And
can you light a fucking garage door opener? Can you eventually put a different code in here so that many guys can fly and you have a different code for each airplane? Yeah, it's, 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 it's not. It's not really the. It's not the code. The problem is like if you had two airplanes in the same frequency, you can have any code you want. Both of them are got jammed, right? Because the same frequency. Same thing here, it's the same line. They do have the modulation, not the frequency, because all of them work on the same wave, like approximately 940 nanometers. But the, the modulation that modulates the signal that transmitted with the light, with the infrared light, it's anywhere from 30 kilohertz to 56, 60 kilohertz. You can make variations and Yes, you can have two models. As a matter of fact, in all my receivers, I have an identification cord. I can make two different ones to work at the same time. But there are points that both of them are going to receive the same information. And although it's not going to glitch, it's going to become mush. It's going to become slow. So yes, you can put more than one model, but there will be times that they, the controls are going to slow down. So, is it now? Question. Any questions? Are there any present articles in any of the magazines, Model Aviation or the others, uh, describing this process? Or are you aware of any upcoming articles? Uh, the process itself has not been uh, written because I, I, actually I have to do that and I didn't do it yet. Uh, Joe Becher wrote a couple of articles for models that they fly with the uh, infrared and uh, others have written articles, especially in England. There's a club called the Aeronauts and they started with two people that were interested in infrared. They started building the units and now there are like 35 of them. And they're very happy and they're very inventive and they, their airplanes are nothing like this. They, they wouldn't accept an airplane like this, stick and tissue. It has to be scaled, or at least look like an airplane. Mm -hmm. And their airplanes are perfect. They're made by Deepron. It's like insulation material, thin material, thin foam material that they use in England for insulation. And they paint these things very realistically. I have a six inch Corsair scale and flies, it's free flies with the rubber band. Perfect, so those guys are, are perfectionists. Uh, if, you have, uh, uh, if you have access to the internet, you can check their website. Just set up any search machine, machine for aeronauts and uh, you can get there or you can get through my website. I'm not really sure if I have the link there. I think I have a few flyers over there with the website address in your interested. Anyway, so you can see that this is different than the radio control that you used to see around. Of course, the transmitter is small, but FMA started uh, producing them now. And the transmitter over there is a regular standard box, like the ones that you see for radio frequency. And, uh, we have two versions, one for <coughs> one for infrared. It's much better looking. It has uh, switches for server reversing, for mixing, dual rates, the whole uh, nine yards. They should be coming out with this unit, but you know, bigger companies take much mm -hmm. longer to produce uh, uh, this kind of stuff. Still on the patents? No patents. No patents. No patents, no patents because patents there's a lot of work and I don't protect them. I only do patents for work. Yeah. Yeah. We have the lawyers, they pay for them. So. Uh, Sergio, is it possible to configure that in such a turnaround on rather than have the feedback loop in the servo? It's expensive. I what, I, what I like to do is a retract system if you don't try such that it would make just by the, what I have right now is a radio. And I just press the switch, it turns the motor on, mm -hmm. the gears retract, and there's a slip clutch. Yeah, as I think I'm thinking about the switch, the motor stops, push the switch the other way, it versus polarity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have no feedback loop. I've taken the regular servo and removed all the feedback. Could this be configured to operate 
just to turn the motor off and on or, or reverse the motor? Yeah. So you don't, so you just don't have a feedback? You, you want to use your own uh, retractor? Strictly yeah. actuated, yes, yeah. strictly actuated, not a servo. So we just pop. Because they do exist servo activated EMS yeah, as well. Yeah, very heavy, that's a problem. I got mm -hmm. one that's very light. Because so one, less than one ounce, you want the EMS. No, that's no, we track the big gear, big landing gear. Yes, yeah, that's nice. Okay, <laughs> there's something available because uh, I've got I've got quite a bit of hardware on sale. Yeah. By activating this, mm -hmm. you can make it very slow, realistic, or you can make it fast instead of having the switch. You have it proportional. If that can be done, that'd be better. Yet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's assume. I think that one landing gear servo has yeah. weighed about four ounces. Oh no, it's mm. not. It's not. Check EMS. You know EMS. Right? No. I don't know anything about the uh, any any magazine has EMS product. What's the flight duration? Let, let's assume that this is your your tractor gear over there, right? Okay, right. So you go you can go from one side to the other. Okay. Or you can and just so it stays wherever you can just have a non loaded uh, somewhere you, 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 but you can use this. If you are not going to use your motor, you can use this. Right. And set it up slowly. You can do it in one shot, or you can do it slowly. Yeah, basically what I want to do is just have the reversible. Of course. Yeah, you can do you can get this one for the one for the throttle and one for the uh, retractable gear. Yeah, you can instead of using the joystick, mm -hmm. you can have a switch on off switch. So go from one side to the other, and if you have your mechanism, then yeah, the mechanism there's going to be a small slip clutch. I've already designed the actuator, which is a simple gearbox powered. I took a regular servo mm -hmm. and added another passive gear into it to slow it way down. Okay. But obviously, you know, the I can't use the feedback loop that's built in because that wants to keep on going. I need I need about five revolutions out of the servo, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, half a revolution out of the final output. Mm -hmm. But we're going to be building a tricycle landing gear system for Windy. You know, that's what we want to use it there, and I'm building a plane also that will have a standard gear for a retractable tail wheel also. So okay, okay. We can if we get a strong enough servo that's light enough, that'd be perfect. I didn't realize that you could get one that small, that could weigh that little. All the ones I yeah, found at Food Markets and stuff were, one was three ounces, one was almost four. Yeah. And, and they were 180 degree rotation. How much torque does one of these any bitty servos? Those have uh, about 15 uh, inch ounces for the core. They don't have much, but they don't need much crunch. Yeah. But it looked like it had quite a bit when you deflected that rudder. It was blowing the push rod. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they have a tremendous amount of power. You can hardly hold it with your hand. Yeah. Right. Al, even the smallest servo, I was amazed. I bought this little servo and I said, oh yeah, right. Yeah. And, and it opens the throttle. There's no resistance in a, a carburetor at all. It's because they have a lot of gears. And the reduction gives you the thrust. Slow, but yeah. That's it. The nice thing about, I like the idea of slow, especially for landing gear, because you know it's more realistic. Okay, yeah, you don't, you don't want to do Yeah, that. I have an airplane that literally was videotaped down a road axe, and that's just a single pass servo. And the, the landing gear is either up or it just snaps, you know, just disappears. Uh, you don't want to do it. That, but that was just an experiment, and that's a little toy radio. It's not an infrared. I'm going to convert, I'm going to go to infrared instead of radio. I'm yeah, we can do that. As long as you don't need it tomorrow, <laughs> next year we can do it. <laughs> next year will be next right. spring, baby. That's after you know, September we have the big electric. Uh, I made uh, what they call the need, so I have a lot of equipment. Uh, uh, no, no. no. Since last year, uh, they started in Downsville, New York. Oh, this one valley. Near Roscoe. That's Bill Young's, the way it's going to send. Oh, Bill, Bill, Young is, Bill Young is another one of my customers, and he builds these handles. And I I've flown about that, that, but I haven't hooked up the electronics to it yet. Yeah, but I've flown the plane, and on on a stunt ship, that seems difficult to hold that finger from moving while you're moving around. I mean, Danny would probably be able to do it, or mm. Brian Kiefer or somebody, but old people shouldn't be fooled with a trigger while they move. You call yourself old? <laughs> <laughs> old people. I would think a thumb wheel. No, I mean, this is a great yeah. thing for a scale ship or for a cast this around. See, if you're, if you're just going to fly, but when you're 
I mean, this index finger is the original smile. Yeah. And you can buy this, by the way, from Bill Young. <laughs> Just as a good for stunt, but maybe a, a thumb wheel. Yeah, we're talking about Well, Woody yeah. has the thing. What, what's on yours? That I forget. That it's, it's almost like that five there. Yeah, yeah, it's got a little. But well, I made a ratchet for it. Yeah. So yeah. I can make yeah. each one of the different speeds. Oh, really? Yeah, because I'm. Well, this would be okay. You know what? This would be good on a smaller, like a 35 ship. Even on a nobler, that, but when you start putting line tension on and you're bending back, yeah. the it's hard to keep your thumb in the same spot the whole time. The throttle on the big streak is up on top of the handle. Right. Our right. original design was going to be like this, yeah. and it, yeah. it wasn't going to work. Yeah. So we have a toggle switch up top there, right. and that's, like you said, a thumb wheel on right. there. Some you could just go, um, leave it, and get back to well, the right. switch on the street for if you want yeah, to use it. Yeah, we just pick up that off and off the now. But, but now picture another scenario. You just want to, like, Cole Wendt has a lot of planes with unique features. You, you don't want a competition plane. You're not going to fly it then answer anything. You just want to have something that's fun to take to the field. This this would be perfect for a, for a 35 ship. A profile, land it, fly it, invert it, almost land it, spin it around, do wing overs from takeoffs. That would be perfect, but I don't think in a 70-ounce in a competition, 91, that, that gets where you're getting that. As soon as you start doing this, you jiggle the handle. But for scale, it's perfect. Scale, scale, scale perfect. Scale, perfect. 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 Wendy, you mentioned before that the, the system with the insulated flying lines and the servo driver doesn't work well for stunt, you said, because of the wires. Are you talking about the, the wires the flying lines that are insulated, like mm -hmm. like yeah, twenty seven thousands. So that's the problem, not like yeah. the, not the little little pigtails. Oh no no no! It's it's right. the fact that yeah, I'll give you an example. To get what I did, I went to the, the field with the red plane that I test every night right. with seventy foot solid lines. When you convert to braid, it's you, to get the same feel, you have to go to about two feet less. With O twenty sevens, you got to go to about fifty feet. Mm -hmm. To get that same feel where the lines aren't like clothes lines blown in. Is that the thinnest? That's the thinnest one? Legal, yes. To be legal on a, because the metal part has to be 018. You can't count the plastic. See if you could count the flow. Well, you know, and you got a big you know, voltage drop. drop. You've got to run yeah. uh, roughly 12 volts. But Fred Cromer has that system down with science. That's yeah. a done deal. 18. 18 volts at the handle of the flight street. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, you have it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This yeah. system doesn't send voltage down the wire. The wire. The, there's a battery yeah. hole. And it's all control. So there's yeah. a battery in the plane. Yeah. I have so a, a, a thousand current, current wire. wire. Yeah. Okay. okay. You know what's great for so a switch power? It's control. No, because it doesn't stretch. You know, when you, when you release them, by the way, if you have that efficient wire and you want to make a stooge line, when normally a stooge line goes, knowing it, it jumps out. That's just pulls right out. I think there's no, no stretch. I think that whole tough screen. All that jazz. You ever see yeah, that piece of something? Yeah. 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 You know, with the proliferation of large flyers, this has been an issue in model aviation recently, where everybody in this is is going to be out flying in local areas with uh, losing radio frequency in these small planes. And it probably is going to be an upsetting uh, situation with a conventional RC flying. There already is at Joe Vester's field. Okay. Now He's got a park near his field, and if they go to the park and don't tell them, it can be a problem. Right. Now, for five years, as you know, I've been flying one of the Project Grumman Guardians, right. and I've been using RF for throttle and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, what else, rudder right. and flaps. And Augie, many a day, when he was recuperating from his knee surgery, was able to sit in the shade in a lawn chair under a tree mm. and actually control the speed. And fly the planes around the, the circle, yeah. Well, I'm modifying the Guardian now to put another servo in so it will be elevated. Now, I'm using RF, and I keep my antenna down. Uh, I'm not aware of any conventional RC fields you know, within the range of, of the circle burner field. And I do intend to continue pursuing it using radio frequency. And yet, I was feeling kind of guilty until all the park flyers started to proliferate that 
I could inadvertently be shooting somebody down. And if it's he's using ground frequency, and then that's how you would shoot anybody down. I mean, he's using ground frequency. Yeah. First off, it's legal. Yeah. Maybe the ground said there's no problem. Yeah. Because you are on the ground. Part of it is on the ground. The plane's attached to you. Plane's attached to the ground. I'm sorry. Ground frequencies are okay. But I cannot sure. compete in any control line event because the rules specifically forbid the use of radio control in any control line events. And when wrong, I heard the wrong, 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 in scale, you cannot use a radio control to control the flying surfaces. But flying you can use surfaces. It to control throttle and and uh, retracts. You can't well, use it to fly the plane. Yeah. So you can use it to control throttle. But what would the reasoning of something like that be? Nope. What would the reasoning if, be? If you, if, you can, if you control your flight surfaces with electrical signal, that must go down the lines. You yeah. know, so that's you it's, it's, it's the same. I don't know why they... So you tip your push to that. The 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 transmitter yeah, yeah, the 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 I asked somebody to show you the if I was using the lines to control the signal. He said, I'm not sure that 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 I'm not I don't know. I know it's somebody that we should know. What brain travels? We can't use a radio, a ground frequency radio, to run, and they wind up with these scale planes with 32 lines and pins and areas and battery packs the size of car. Who invented that? When you went to the Nats, were you what? challenged? What? Yes, and I won. You were challenged? Yes, yes. yes. Instantly. I didn't even get the plane out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> director long before, months before, told them what I wanted to do, and the person who was training the judges, so they would have some, it wouldn't, it wouldn't hit them like a, uh, a blind, you know, it, they could have time to prepare their side of the case, and there's no case. Protest. Yeah, when the, when the rule cycles come around, why don't you propose your own point? I'm going to get the rule cycle. Are you with the A or with the U? What's that? Yes, what's that? Control. You or A? And you, it's or you. Looks like you went. Oh, no, 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 no. No, in, in our, listen, there's, there's rules in model aviation, that, and we're not unique. That if that you, you, want, you can't ever say it because then you're politically not correct. But there are rules. There's a rule. Listen to this. You want to get something? There's a rule. They break a rule that you have to shut your engine off in seven minutes because otherwise all the good flyers don't get to fly in the same air. They want, and the judges have to sit out in the sun all day. So they want you to fly your flight and then be done with that flight as soon as possible. Guess what they outlaw? Shut the engine off. <laughs> now, 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 I don't care if you're, what, you know, for what, but if you bring this up in public, oh, Sergio came up with that. That's why I want Becher to propose it at the AFA. Let him, let him, let him, let him, let him, let him. One guy I'm doing that actually said we should make throttles illegal because if we use a throttle as a shutoff, it'll prevent an overrun. Think about that, right? <laughs> Every country in the world allows electric starters. There's no place on the planet except an F2B that you can't start your engine with an electric starter. Guess, guess what? Electric starters work. They save your fingers. They're easy. They're convenient. Even you like electric starters. The guy that drives up in a car doesn't drive up with a hand crank, crank his car. He turns the key. And then he says, you can't use an electric starter. And in the rules, it says, flip the prop with your finger. Flick it with your finger. Now picture. The same person that wrote that rule and voted yes, does he go home to his car? Okay, okay, Danny. <laughs> and does he get on an airliner and see four, four guys come out and put? No. Does he go to his wallet and kick stuff? No. But when you get, now think of it. No, I mean, it, because this is what's going to happen with infrared. Somebody's going to find a reason to make a rule against it. 